Welcome to Lockheed Martin Spacemakers, the podcast that takes you out of this world for an inside look at some of our most innovative and challenging missions. My name is Ben, and I'm your host. This week, we are doing special launch coverage of the Artemis One mission, which is launching NASA's Orion spaceship, designed and built by Lockheed Martin, to the moon. Today, we have special guests with us, Robert Lightfoot, who is Space Executive Vice President, and Lisa Callahan, Vice President and General Manager of Commercial Civil Space. So excited to be here. How are you guys feeling? Already, man. This is this is a great time. It's going to be fun. A uh, long time coming, and the team is uh, on station already, um, paying attention to all the things that are happening out there on the pad. And we're excited. This is this is this is the first step in a long journey to get us back into deep space. We are super excited, and we are ready to go. <laughs> Yeah, we're here one day away from launch, outside uh, in front of the rocket, in front of the vehicle assembly building, out in the sun. Uh, and um, yeah, we're all very excited to see this launch happen. Robert, you used to work for NASA. I'm sure you've seen a lot of launches. And now you're here for Artemis One with Lockheed Martin. What's that journey been like for you? Well, it's been, it's been a bit of a long one, right? Uh, we've, been, we've been working on this for a while. And when I was on the NASA side, the last time I was here was EFT-1, which was a test flight of Orion in 2014. Um, I was on the NASA side of the ledger. Right now, I'm on the Lockheed side. It's just, it's just exciting. I mean, this whole journey. This is, this is what we do. I mean, when you think about, you know, the United States and what the United States can do. What a perfect example, right? A perfect example. And we're gonna, we're gonna be the ones that, that take humans back to the moon, but also, and beyond, right? And this is that first start of that journey. So, I couldn't be more excited. Couldn't be more proud of the teams that have gotten us to this point. It's a Definitely a national effort. Um, I think we're I think we're in all 50 states, right, including Puerto Rico. Uh, it's just it's just we're, we're using technology and people from all over the world to get this done. So that's what it takes, and so it's pretty exciting. Pretty exciting to get here. Yeah, it's amazing the collaborative effort at a national level to get this uh, rocket off the ground to get Orion uh, on the mission to the moon, and it's exciting to see it all come together and happen for us. Lisa, Orion is going to the moon. It's taking a couple special payloads along with it. Do you mind sharing us about what those payloads will be doing? Yeah, so there's three payloads that'll be on Orion for this mission. Um, the first one is called Callisto. And Callisto is a partnership that we have with Amazon and Cisco. And we have a um, space-based, purposely built um, Amazon Alexa that will be on board Orion that does not need the internet to, uh, to work. And then we have the WebEx from, um, from Cisco that will be our connection from Orion down to Houston at JSC for the Mission Control Center. Um, and so really excited we'll be able to check in with Orion during flight and see how she's doing, how fast she's going. And the thing that's really cool about it is everyone at home, if you have an Alexa, you can say, take me to the moon, and you can hear about the mission along the way. It's about 42-day mission, so a lot to learn during those 42 days. Um, we also have a partnership um, uh, that we have with uh, STEMRAD, and we have an Astorad vest that's going to be on board Orion, and this Astorad vest is with the Israeli company STEMRAD, and it's really helping us to understand um, how we can protect astronauts from radiation in a solar storm. So there's two radiation torsos that come from DLR, the German Space Agency. Um, one of them will be re uh, wearing this Astorad vest, so we'll be able to, get to experiment and see how that can protect our astronauts. And then the last is um, in the uh, adoption model between SLS and Orion, there's 10 CubeSats that are flying on this mission. One of them is built by Lockheed Martin. Um, it's called Loon IR, and uh, that spacecraft is going to fly by the moon and take pictures of the moon's surface with an infrared camera that we have. So really exciting, um, that optical pictures that we'll get back from the moon is pretty exciting as well. So those are our three missions. You think about what Lisa just said, I talked about the national impact. If, you, if you're paying attention, you caught the international impact. That's what's, so, that's what's so cool. Got a lot of international partners that are helping us here, too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Lockheed Martin has a lot going on, uh, including with Orion. So STEMRAD, we interviewed them this week. That's an exciting technology, really cool technology. You get to see that. And then, um, uh, you know, with Luna IR taking photos of the moon, hopefully, you know, what is that going to look like? So yeah. we're excited to see that. And then, um, yeah, like, I got to find an Alexa so I can check it on Orion when it's on the moon. And that's that's like never happened before. So that's really exciting technologies that are made available for us. And you know, our Artemis One is really just the beginning of a series of exciting missions to establish a presence on the moon. 
And uh, would, Lisa, would you mind telling us a little bit more looking forward to uh, the Artemis program? What, what do we have looking forward? Sure, so Artemis 1, as you said, is the first of our flight test missions and it's uncrewed. Artemis 2 is going to be a crewed mission. Um, and so it will be our first crewed mission. Uh, again, a flight test mission to test out all the systems. We'll be adding the life support systems for Artemis 2 as well as the crew displays. Since there's no crew on this mission, we don't have those. Um, so it'll really be testing out all of those systems. Um, and that will take, um, hopefully, the first female around the moon, which for me is just an awesome thing to hear. Um, and then Artemis 3 is um, going to be another crewed mission, and that will be a human landing mission. So we will um, dock up with the human landing system, and we will see um, footsteps back on the moon again. And again, hopefully the first female and the first person of color is a part of that mission. And then we have Artemis 4 and 5, which are already in production right now. So um, this mission is going to continue on for a long time. The um, intent here is to have a sustained presence at the moon so that we can go on even farther into deep space. Uh, Robert, there's a lot going on in the space industry right now. And why are missions like Artemis 1, why are missions like this important? Well, I think for, for me, it's the inspirational value is the first piece that I think about. We're going we're gonna to take what this country can do and with our international partners, we're going to take people further than we ever have before, right? And, and we're going to bring the entire public with us. Think about when we went to the moon. There was no internet. There was none of that available to us. There was no podcast, right? And, and so, so this is an opportunity to bring the general public and everybody along. You never know, maybe you get that spark in the next generation of, of people that want to get into this business. We talk about science, technology, engineering, and mathematics all the time, or STEM. What a great inspirational opportunity to bring in the next generation that's going to be way past me and Lisa to come on and keep going and maybe get us to Mars and even further. The other thing is that when, the, these, when we're going back to stay, you know, we're, we're not talking about just going and, and coming home. We're going to go back to the moon and stay. Every mission we've ever done, right, whether it's a scientific mission, whether it's a human spaceflight mission, we, we always end up getting, we answer a few questions, but we end up getting more that we don't understand. And I'm so excited about what we're going to learn and then what we need to go learn even further. You, you, just, you just rewrite the textbooks, right? I mean, that's what we're going to do. And, and so for us to, you know, I think it's in our DNA as human beings to explore. It always has been. Um, and I think it's also in our DNA to learn, continuous learning. And so these missions give us a chance to, and a glimpse into things we don't know yet, right? And so that's what, first of all, that's what makes it so much fun to work on them because you're going to kind of reinvent history yeah. here, right? Um, but the other, the other piece is you're just, you're just pushing the envelope, continually pushing the envelope. And as I like to say, there, there's, there, you know, what that does back here on Earth, we won't even know until we go through this. What do we learn on the moon? What do we learn at Mars? Those are all things that we bring back to Earth to make it better for us here on this planet. So I, I'm super pumped about this opportunity and think, just, just can't wait to see what we learn. Can, can I just share a story? You talked about inspiration. And um, yesterday I flew in and literally on my flight last night, the pilot came on and said, everybody shut up. I need to tell you something that's really important. I thought, my God, we're going to crash. Right? <laughs> yeah, gonna um, and they said, if a, your neighbor's got AirPods in, you know, wake them up, tell them you got to listen to this. And um, they said, how many of you on this plane are going to see the Artemis mission? And of course, you know, about three quarters of the plane right. raises their hand, right? And then they said, how many of you on this plane worked the Artemis mission? And just about three quarters of the plane um, raised their hand. And it was, uh, then they said, thank you guys so much for what you're doing. You are bringing humanity back to the moon and we are so excited about it. And then the funny part is a couple of people that were around me that didn't raise their hand were like, what was that all about, right? And so when I explained what was going on, they were like, oh my gosh, I saw Apollo land on the moon and I am so excited to see that we're going back again. So it really is about inspiring the world, really. Yeah, NASA's Artemis program is really reminiscent of the Apollo era and, and Artemis 1 is uh, launching in more than one ways, launching and making history as we are establishing ourselves uh, on the moon. Robert, Lisa, thank you for joining us today on Space Makers. Thank you. It's great to see you. Welcome back to Lockheed Martin Space Makers. We have another, another special guest with us, uh, Tim Chihan. Thank you for joining us. Why don't you remind us uh, what you do at Lockheed Martin, how you're connected to Orion? Sure. Um, so I'm the chief architect of commercial civil space. Um, so I lead teams that develop our advanced concepts for the future. Um, but before that, I spent about 10 years on the Orion program, starting in trajectories and ending up um, as Orion system architect. 
So a, a lot of the things that we did, um, decisions that we made are now sitting on the pad and I'm so excited. Yeah, we're day one from launch. Artemis One is right there behind us. How are you feeling to see your, you know, part of what you've done and all the work you've done and the creation you've done right there on the launch pad? I, I, I can't describe it. I'm, I'm kind of overwhelmed. Um, you know, as a kid, as a fourth grader, I was looking towards the future and I'm like, I want to help build the next space shuttle. And um, to actually uh, have, a, have the luck and the, of a career to do that has been so, so great. And, um, and also, um, I also am excited to be at another flight test. Um, I was on the launch team for EFT-1, Orion's last flight test in orbit. Um, and to be here completing the last uncrewed flight test before we send people to the moon, it's indescribable. It's really exciting. This is my first launch too, so I'm excited to be a part of this with you. You know, um, what was some of the design that Lockheed Martin had to consider to, you know, design Orion spaceship to overcome some of the challenges of, of space? Can you speak to some of that, how, how Orion was designed to overcome those challenges? Sure, absolutely. And, and there's a couple of different flavors. Um, so in the deep space environment, um, there's environmental differences. There's a lot more radiation. You're above the Van Allen radiation belts. So you have to deal with that. Um, there's no GPS up there. So you have to have your own independent navigation systems to be able to be out there. The temperatures are different. The distance to communicate back with the Earth is distant. Um, is, is it's a lot more distant than low Earth orbit and you're talking with the deep space network. Um, so those are some of the in-orbit things. But also, just getting to the moon and coming back is a lot faster, a lot more energy. So when you're on the rocket and you need to abort off of a rocket that can send you directly to the moon, that's more challenging and we, we solved that. And when you come back, you're coming back at 11 kilometers per second, that's 25,000 miles an hour. Um, and so all of those systems, the heat shield, the parachutes, um, all have to work. We worked hand in hand with NASA to design all those systems. Um, and then, you know, th things popped up that you wouldn't think about, but as you come through the Van Allen radiation belts and you hit by that radiation, your next event is entry interface. Like you don't have time to recover, so this spacecraft has to be ready for all of that. Wow, that's really exciting. You kind of just walked us through the mission, but can you speak to some of the uh, Artemis, uh, Artemis One key mission milestones and some of the ones that we're going to be looking at? Sure, absolutely. So, you know, of course there's liftoff and everything's all ready for that moment when we get into flight. Um, for Orion, um, about three minutes after launch, the, um, the fairing panels that protect the, the service module will come off the last jettisons. Um, so we'll be watching those, those are critical events. Everything went great on EFT-1. Um, and then you'll get up into orbit, we'll deploy the solar arrays, we'll watch, make sure everything, all the power levels come up. And then the, the moment that I, I can't wait for, hopefully tomorrow, is, is when you know, launch control says something like, Orion, you're go for TLI. And uh, TLI is translunar injection, which means we're going to the moon. Um, so exciting. Um, and then there's propulsion burns um, to get in and out of orbit in, at the moon. And, and in some cases, that time that we're doing the one and a half orbits in this uh, very high above the moon, that's when we're going to check out the deep space aspects. And little things like, like temperatures, we have lots of predictions for that. Um, but, you know, from worst case to best case, and we want to see what reality is like. Um, and it's a complex vehicle. Um, and then, of course, the real big thing, that thing where I would describe, where you come through the radiation belt, you hit entry interface, drogue shoots, main shoots, splash down in the water. We'll watch all of that data. Everything went great on EFT-1. Now we're coming in faster. Um, so that, those are sort of the, the big things that I'm working, looking forward to. Um, and over 42 days, it's the long, longest mission. Yeah, it's really exciting. And, and so Lockheed Martin is designed for deep space. It's technically the only exploration spacecraft designed not only just to go to the moon, but there's also plans that this spaceship could also go to Mars. Can you speak to that? Sure. So a part of what we do is develop advanced concepts for what we're going to do next. What are we going to do on the surface of the moon? in orbit around the moon at the gateway, and then we have a concept called Mars Base Camp. And that's a set of concepts that look at what are the vehicles that we need to take humans to Mars, land, come safely back. And Orion is part of that Mars Base Camp concept. Um, it serves a number of roles. It's the command deck. Um, it's the emergency vehicle. Um, it's an, an 
an emergency uh, habitat, it's a radiation shelter, all the things that it has to do for this lunar mission, it provides for on the Mars mission. But Mars is a three-year mission, so it's part of a larger vehicle, but it, okay. it's this core capability. Yeah, that's amazing. So what are some of the um, things that we're hoping to learn from Artemis 1 that will help set us up for the further Artemis missions and maybe one day Mars or what you're talking about? Yeah, so, so, so many things. Um, and in, in particular, so this is the first flight of all of the Orion systems on its launch vehicle. So that integrated vehicle performance and every, how all the systems work, both from a hardware perspective and a software perspective and an operations perspective and how do we communicate with the spacecraft from the ground. Um, all of those things are important. I mentioned those temperatures. We got temperature sensors everywhere. I was the um, flight test objectives lead for EFT-1 and we just had sensors everywhere so that we could, you know, what's the heat shield temperature when we come in? What's the cold um, temperatures when we're in space? Um, and then also, you know, looking at from a mission perspective, how does the propulsion system perform? What's the thrust? What orbits are we getting into? And then most importantly, how accurate are our predictions? And that's what we're really validating. If our predictions, our designs, um, our analysis are accurate and we anchor it with this test data, right. then we're ready, we're ready to go. We're ready to go to the moon. That's awesome and exciting. We are really at the precipice of making history tomorrow. Uh, excited to see the launch. Tim, always a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you for joining. I just want to remind everybody that you can continue to follow along our special launch coverage at our Lockheed Martin's YouTube channel. And you can follow us at Lockheed Martin Space Makers wherever podcasts are found. Tomorrow is the launch, so go to NASA Live to watch the launch live wherever you are. Thank you very much for joining us. See you soon.